Hey everyone, so we're back again with another Soul video because Peter released 2.2.7 so I'm just going to go through that and show you what the actual update is and how to install it again in case you've got any problems with your installation. Also I've got a great card to show you today and then we're going to go through the Soul Planner. As ever, do check out the rest of the channel. There's lots more sim racing on there. And do check out simrace247.com for all the latest sim racing and motorsport news. Let's jump right in and we always start with a car and today is no exception. And this is the Nissan GTR Nismo 2022 by Seki Performance version 1. It came out a couple of days ago and this is a 2-in-1 pack so you do get the stock and tune. So what features have we got on this? Well it's got Android Auto, opening hood, daytime running lights, boost display as well as a number of other features. This tuned version that I've got running here is 801 brake horsepower, weighs 1703 kilograms so that gives it a 211 mile miles per hour top speed and 0 to 60 a phenomenal 2.6 seconds this tuned version also comes with a titanium exhaust ceramic brakes custom body parts that you can see and those Porsche racing seats inside that look really cool it's also got ADV1 wheels on it and as you can see the engine and all of the different parts of this mod hang together really well some great detail on here so thanks to Seki Performance this is free and the link is in the description it is hosted on Patreon but remember Patreon hosts free and paid for mods so this is a free mod Do enjoy that great car from Seki Performance. Thanks to them and thanks to all the modders involved today. Okay, so I've just downloaded Sol 2.2.7. I've got the main Sol install folder there and I've also got the PDFs and this complete change log that I'm just going to have a quick look in now. So do refer to my guide 2.2.6, which is exactly the same if you do want an extended install guide. That's on the channel now. Now, if you look right at the bottom, Sol 2.2.7 has only got one edition from 2.2.6 and that is an audio correction on scaling of rain sounds with CSP 1.80 preview 115 that is the latest preview from Ilya so not too much change then and as you can see all of the standard install processes work as normal so what I'm going to do is just show you that very quickly as I install it so remember if you go into the Sol 2.2.7 folder you'll see Sol uninstall.bat we're going to copy that and we're going to paste it into our root directory of a set to Corsa. Once it's there you can run it in one of two ways. You can either right click on it and run it as administrator. That may work on your PC depending on how the files are set up or on my computer I can just double click it and it says do you want to uninstall Sol and I click on yes and then that will uninstall Sol and you can see Sol successfully removed. It's really important that you see that if you get anything else just try running that Sol uninstall button make sure it's in your root directory. Now that we've done that we need to copy over the top four folders so we just highlight those and you can copy and paste them or drag them over. I'm going to copy and paste. Now this is really important because once you do this it will copy all of those files over and then it will ask you to replace a couple of them. You can see it says seven files with the same names but it's copied 544 items without having to replace files. That means that the uninstall process worked correctly. If you're replacing lots of files, hundreds of files, you've not done it correctly so do use that sol uninstall.bat in the root directory of your installed Assetto Corsa. Okay now that that's done let's very quickly just go into content manager so I'm just going to bring up a set of Corsa here and I'm just going to double check a couple of settings and these are settings that if you're doing a fresh install of Soul you need to make sure they are set correctly. The first place to go though is settings custom shader patch and about and updates and I say this on every video make sure you understand what version of CSP you're on. I'm on a preview version from Ilya's Patreon site but if you're not on that right version you can always just double click that 1.79 there and that will put you on the latest public version. So if you're not paying for CSP, the preview versions, use that 1.79. Also, just go down to weather effects down on the left hand side there and make sure that you've got the right settings in here. Sol 2.42 is the latest Sol planner and that's the one we're going to be using today. That's the controller script and then the weather script next to it. I've got pure on there at the moment, but I'm just going to put it onto Sol and you can see it says Sol version 2.27. That is the latest version that we have just installed. So make sure that they are all set correctly. 
Also, it's worth pointing out that this latest version of the planner has been adjusted so it does actually run Rain Effects 2, which is the latest version of CSP Preview. That's the external rain. Okay, then, now that we've checked both of those, there's a couple of other areas we just need to check. The first is just to go to a set of course and video and make sure reflections is on two faces per frame. And also at the top right hand corner, do double check what PP filter you're on because you do want to make sure that it's on a sol or compatible to sol PP filter. Filter. And then also going to a set of course and apps and just double check and I say on every video all of these boxes with Sol have got a tick box next to them and we're ready to go. Now there's no sponsor today but we do have a sister channel. Hey everyone, exciting news, Surspats Gaming now has a sister channel and that is Surspats Racing with the link on the screen now. Not only will there be more a set of course of content but also for lots of other sim racers and drivers including BMNG, Rexfest, Forza Gran Turismo, R Factor, Automobilista, Dirt Rally, ACC iRacing and lots more. Surspats Racing will be all about driving and giving you guys the best content for all of your favourite sim racers and drivers. The channel will always be about what you want to see and your suggestions, so if you want to come along for the ride, click on the link and check out more content from Surspats. Great stuff, so now that we've got Sol installed, we're gonna go onto the planner, and I do get asked a lot of questions about the planner. I did do a video on this um, about a year ago, I think it was, but today we're just gonna revisit it because there's been a number of changes on there. Before we do that, let's just go into Sol and I'm just going to click on Ultra to make sure all of the settings are put back to where I actually run. And also, if you skip through the pages, you'll see there's some settings in there. Do only change the things that you know how to change. I know Sol does have a reset button, but just changing these one at a time means that you're not going to get into any difficulty and have any strange things happening on screen. So I'm just checking the cloud rendering here and also making sure that I've changed the color blue on the sky. I like that number too. Okay then, if we we press the four dots in the corner and then click on Soul Planner. This is what we have now. There's a lot of buttons on here, and Peter does a fantastic guide that's included with Soul Download. So do check that out too. I'm just going to go over the top level of this and just to give you some idea of what you've got on the screen. So let's take a look at the buttons, and I think we're just going to go across the top first. So these four buttons at the top, at the left hand side, these are import and export for planners or for presets as well. So again. Do read the guide that Peter's put in the Soul download for that. I'm not going to go into it too much, but that's what those buttons do. Next to this, we've got the sun and the moon. Remember, Sol has a full astronomical simulation. So depending on the year and the time and also on the month, the sun and the moon will be in different places. Then we move on to the wiper control. So this is pretty cool. So if you have it on minus two, there's no wipers at all. Minus one is auto wipers controlled by Sol. And then you can put manual wipers on all the way up to four. And you can see those going on the Nismo down there. So really leave this on minus one unless you're doing something special. No need to change that. This next section is brand new in the Soul Planner and I did say this now supports Rain FX version 2 and that's what these do here. So depending on where you put this will depend on what kind of grip, what kind of aquaplaning, how the rain affects your car. So if you put it onto one it will still be easy to drive through everything but exceptionally heavy rain. But if you've got it all the way up to four then you're going to find it very tricky even when the track is wet. So those people asking I can't drive in the rain that we've got at the moment do use those buttons there then of course we've got the time and the month and the year now these can all be changed manually if you're going to press the button that's closest to the time for instance it will just go up a minute at a time but then if you press it on the other end of the scale you'll see it moves very quickly so you can really quickly go through the time of day there you'll also see that the red bar is moving as well you can see that skimming across the top of the planner so you can move it actually on the time or you can move it on that red bar there manually. We are currently in planner mode. So if you look all the way to the left across where this bar is that I'm moving the red line, you'll see there's a red box with an arc in there. That's the planner mode and that's what we're on at the moment. So we can move all of these manually. 
Underneath the time, we've also got the date, and this works in exactly the same way. So not only can you change the day, but you're also changing the month as well. And if you keep cycling through that, you will also change the year. Also remember, if you're changing the month, you're gonna get shorter days, especially if you're in the winter. And if you do get any problems with any of this, you can always reset everything. So I'm just gonna move this back to noon, and we're just gonna have a look at time next. Now we've talked about time at the top, but you can also multiply time. So if I've moved this into noon and you can see the red bar, I can actually speed up time. So this is one way to have multiple parts of weather happen in a race. If you've got a 10 minute race, you could speed the time up of what's happening around you. You can see the time flying up there and this red bar will slowly move across. So if you put different weather in the different slots, you can speed it up enough that you can have a whole dawn to dust race within 10 minutes so you can actually do that it's one way of having dynamic weather in your race there is another way too and we're going to go through that so that is that time multiplier and then underneath that we've got this play pause and stop button they are not highlighted when we're in this planner mode but we will go through those in a moment Let's go through the main weather slots now. I've had lots of questions about this, especially in comments to videos recently, about how we randomize this and how do they work. So the basic premise is really simple. You can put different weathers in each of these boxes, and then as the red line goes across and the time goes across the day, you will get these different weathers. And you can see I can just pop them all in there. Being able to put different weather in all of these boxes, you can see how you can use that in conjunction with the speed up of time that we've just gone through. So I'm just gonna put some random weather in here. Very, very random, sand in the middle of it in the afternoon. But if you're, obviously if you click on then that top bar and you move your red line, you will see you will have that weather at that time of day. If I do speed up time here, you can see I'm gonna add it really high now, 401 times. The minutes are flying up and that red bar is moving across. As it moves across into the next box, it will actually transition into that weather. Now, one thing to be aware of, when you've got external rain, it's not gonna dry quickly because we're doing this very, very quick. We're moving through these very quick. External rain does need time to dry and that's really important. We'll go through that later on in the video. As you can see then we've now gone into noon and we've gone into an overcast clouds piece of weather. The lighting changes, everything changes around the car. So I'm sure you can see now how very easily with just the settings we've already gone through, you can create some very dynamic weather pieces. Already now it's changing into the afternoon, few clouds and then eventually it will go into sand, clear and no clouds. But I did talk about dynamic weather and randomized weather too. So let's take some of these pieces of weather out and I'm gonna to talk to you about how that works. So we're just gonna remove all these different pieces of weather here. Do you remember guys why I'm doing this as well? If you look on the rest of the channel, I've got lots of guides and tutorials on Sol, CSP and Pure. So if there's something I'm not covering here that you want to know, it's most likely covered in one of those videos. So let's look at random weather then. Now, if I click on random weather and put it in this noon piece, you will see that there's a number of blue squares. Those blue squares are what are programmed into that one random weather icon. Now, if you double click on the icon, it turns orange. You can then take some of those blue squares out and you can put squares of your own in so you could just have a couple or you could have a number of different squares in there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it slightly differently and program it so I've just got those four in there that random dry area then when the red line goes into that and we're at that time in the day it will have that weather now I can click it on all of these different segments and you will have one of these four random weathers in each one of those segments so you can program it by double clicking on it again Again, and then you can take some of them out or add some more in. Also on this, remember that if you're changing one of the other icons, you can have them all individually with different blue squares in. You can see I can have different ones on one of the random ones and on the next random one, which is the same type, I can have different blue boxes in that. It's really useful. It means that you've got massive flexibility in how you use this randomized weather. All of those three question mark icons are actually programmable like that so you can do what you want with those it's a very powerful way to get truly randomized weather now there is another area that we're going to focus on here and that is all of the rain icons that we've actually got on the planner 
And just to point out that Sol does not bring rain, this is CSP Preview, the Patreon edition that gives external rain. So if I click on this, it should start to rain, but remember where the red bar is. So in the evening slot, the green slot, we can see the blue bar has gone up, so that rain is ready to go there. But we're still on noon on the time. So if you are getting confused about where the weather is, always refer to that red line. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the red line into the evening and as soon as it goes into that box and the time is just ticking along we've got heavy rain starting. As that rain starts to settle on the ground, let's just have a look at what's actually happening on this right hand side now because this has changed in the latest Sol planners. You can see there's red bars and there's blue bars. The blue bar is going to match where the red bar is in rain amount. You've also got wetness and puddles. If they're on minus one, it means they're linked to Sol and CSP and it will automatically do what it needs to do to bring that rain to the game. You've also got humidity and ambient temperature and road temperature. Both of those have a real big impact on how long the wetness stays on the track when it does actually stop raining. And remember this section at the top? If you've got it on number four reel there, it's going to be incredibly difficult to drive in heavy rain. You're probably not going to be able to do it. If you want to drive in heavy rain, knock it down a few notches onto medium or easy. It's also worth pointing out as well with the latest versions of CSP, you can see how this water is starting to gather at the side of the track, either side of the track. This is because with the new rain effects it finds the lowest part of the track and it does gather there like real puddles. So if it's a LiDAR track or it's been laser scanned that's going to make it even more realistic. So what we're going to do now is just take the rain off, I'm just going to put no clouds there. The rain will slowly stop but it doesn't disappear this is really important if you're using the planner especially for rapid changes of weather you need to remember that the rain is not going to disappear quickly the wetness will stay there and in fact if you look at the wetness and puddles you'll see that them slowly going down you can also see that the rain is not millimeters per hour now but the bottom temperatures the ambient and road temperature Putting those up will mean that the rain dries quicker. Now, you're not going to see it quickly in this footage here, but over a small period of time, the rain will start to dissipate and the wetness will disappear. There is one really easy way to just reset everything, and that is if we take it off minus one and put it to zero on wetness and puddles, you see everything disappears. And again, then drop it back to minus one and it's ready to go again, linked to any weather changes. So we've gone over time, we've gone over all of the different types of weather, and now we've gone over rain. So that gives you a pretty comprehensive guide on how to use this. But we've got these three buttons here, and it's worth just talking about these very quickly. This top button is the planner button and that's what we've been on whilst we've been configuring the weather in this video. But we're going to take a look at the other two buttons as well because one of them especially can give you some very flexible ways of putting a lot of weather into one race. So remember we've been using all the time and date in that top right hand corner. If we go to the second button down, this is the timed mode. So each of these slots now has a time that it will last and you can put it all the way down to one minute and you can go up to a different number of minutes if that's what you want. So if we put all these onto one minute and you had a 10 minute race or a 15 minute race it would cycle throughout all of these so not only would the time move as you went through that race quite quickly I would say but also the weather would change in each one of these slots as you went through so if you built this out with some random weather and it was a 10 minute race and you were setting it up like I am now very quickly you're going to get some quite diverse weather happening and I have put a video about this on my channel about a year ago when I did the last planner and it looks absolutely stunning. Now you can see that yellow line going up so when you press play in the bottom right hand corner on this timed piece here that yellow line will go up the red line has disappeared as you can see. The yellow line will go up and it will go through each of these slots one at a time and it will take as long as you've actually set it. Now the bottom button is similar but it works in a slightly different way. This is timestamp mode. Now timestamp mode does what it says on the tin. Really each section has a timestamp and depending how fast you've set the time to move you can actually have dynamic weather again. So in the top right hand corner you can see we're at 4 o'clock and when we go into timestamped mode it starts at 4 o'clock. So it's going to start from where you are actually in time in the day. 
and in the game. So that is a really cool way of setting weather up also. The last thing just to go over are these presets. So I talked earlier about importing and exporting. Everything can be done with these presets. And the great thing is that you can set quite complicated weather up and then you can actually export it, save it, and then import it when you want to use it. So guys, that's the end of the video. I know it's a really long video today, but I think it's worth going over that planner guide. Please use this video as a reference. Please use Peter's documentation as a reference too. I'm just trying to give you the top level guide so you can get your dynamic weather up and running. Thanks so much for watching. Remember to give the video a thumbs up. Check out Sir Spats Racing and I'll see you soon, guys.